Alrighty guys, and welcome back today. We're going to be looking at the hillbilly and why I put him in top three killers in Dead by Daylight, narrowly taking the spot as the third best killer in Dead by Daylight, making him the king of the game because he's only beaten by two killers, which are both queens of the game. Now, this being said, the hillbilly, let's talk about the default things about the hillbilly. It takes him 2.5 seconds to rev his chainsaw. Unlike Leatherface, who moves left and right and can down multiple targets, the hillbilly can move at 230% movement speed in a straight line and he can twist narrowly from left to right there are certain add-ons that are going to allow him to move more um, freely such as spiked shoes etc um, or moonshine however we are here to discuss why I put the Billy so high up in the third place in the game based on playing in the red and the purple ranks without using any add-ons now the Billy moves across the board like I said at 230% movement speed he can rev his chainsaw in 2.5 seconds and it downs a target in one hit therefore it makes it a very lethal weapon. Now there are a lot of ways you can build your billy. Now this is how I build my billy. All right. So just having a little bit of a look right now, I can already tell you we got ruin. Now ruin is not needed. 100% not read it, read it, needed. The reason ruin's on my list here is because I have a free spot. I could put on discordance. I could put on anything to fill in the blank here, but I do have Ruin as a stability perk based on the fact that I might get lucky, it might last, I might get unlucky, it might not last. It's just there to stall the game while I down one guy, two guys if I'm lucky, to get situational awareness through Thrilling Tremor and regression through Pop or possibly a snowball through Infectious Fright. But we're going to talk about Ruin just for a quick moment here. Now Ruin makes a generator regress 5% of what is completed. It takes 80 seconds to do a generator. If a Jenny has done 79 seconds or 79.9 .9 seconds and survivor misses the great skill check which is the little bit the bar will be red and they land a good bit it goes back five percent five percent at 80 is four it'll go back four seconds all productivity on the generator will be stalled for 1.5 seconds a lot of survivors you'll see when they miss a skill check will let go of a jenny and jump back on to kind of cancel that out they save about 0 0.3 0 0.4 seconds so it doesn't really make too much of a difference but i mean every point second counts i guess this being said, Ruin is a totem perk, so it will appear on a totem at the beginning of the game. It'll be lit. Once a survivor breaks a totem, you will no longer have the perk for the rest of the trial. Therefore, it is what I refer to as a gambling perk. If you run it and it breaks, that's just how the cookie crumbles, unfortunately. Or in this case, the totem crumbles. If it's gone, it's gone. As opposed to running something like Corrupt Intervention, which is what can you do in 120 seconds, as opposed to Ruin, mass ruin might last 5 seconds, it might last 5 minutes. So do you want stability or do you want to gamble? Now, I'm happy to take the gamble here. That being said, my other three perks strongly support my build. Okay, so I've got Pop Goes the Weasel, my favorite perk in Dead by Daylight. This comes in at a whopping 25% regression off a generator when you kick it. A Jenny's almost done at 80 seconds. You kick it, it goes back 20 seconds. Now it's going back 1% per second as well. So it's going to get a lot of regression coming out of it. If it hasn't been kicked, you will be able to tell it won't have any sparks. If it has been kicked with pop, it'll have red sparks coming out of it. If it has been kicked without pop, it'll have white sparks coming out of it. That way you know. The difference between pop uh, kick and a surge kick is pop makes more sparks come out as opposed to Surge makes the sparks come out. They're both red, but the sparks coming out of Surge if, uh, are smaller, as opposed to the, like, kind of fireworks coming out of Pop. Very powerful perk. It rewards you for playing well. The more people you down and hook, the stronger this perk. If you can't catch people, then it's going to really hurt you. Due to the fact that Billy has so much map momentum moving at 230% as opposed to some killers that are stuck moving at 115 throughout the board, possibly even slower, like a Huntress at 110. Due to being able to move over double her movement speed, Pop is such a crucial perk on him because you can get the value out sooner or later. As of changes to perk, it used to last uh, 40 seconds. Now it lasts 60 seconds. That at all ranks. It's a uh, wonderful perk. I can highly recommend it on every killer, bar the hag, and I guess the trapper, but I still run it on the trapper. Moving on to our next perk is Thrilling Tremor. A lot of people say barbecue and chili is crucial on the Billy and one of his best perks. I highly disagree. It is a god tier perk, 100%. It is fantastic. But there is a perk better than barbecue and chili, and that is called Thrilling Tremor. You might be wondering, why is Thrilling Tremor better? How does a survivor win the game in Dead by Daylight? Realistically, what is the order that it goes in? Providing you haven't killed everyone and the last guy gets a hatchet five gens. So for a survivor to win, they need to complete generators, correct? 
So to stop generators, Thrilling Tremor benefits you more with more situation awareness, knowing where regression is needed and gives you stall throughout the board. Now, if you're unaware of what Tremor does as opposed to barbecue, you hook somebody with barbecue, anyone within 40 meters will glow pink and you're going to be able to chase, well, outside of 40 meters will glow pink. You're going to be able to chainsaw right across and enter chase almost straight away, unless they're in a locker hiding from barbecue and chili. You can't hide from Thrilling Tremor. The best thing you can do is let go of a Jenny if you know the killer's about to pick some somebody up now you can't work on it for 16 seconds so you've wasted a lot of time just in that window so just kind of keep that in mind it could come back and really bite you in an ar in the ass so what does thrilling tremor do when i down a survivor and i pick him up all generators will now glow white and the entity's grasp will take them much like corrupt in uh much like Corrupt Intervention, right? All Jennies will be sealed for 16 seconds. If a Jenny is not sealed, it means a survivor was currently working on that generator. That is really good information. I just down Jeff, and I pick him up, and I've got Megan on the hook. I now see two different generators that are not white. They're the normal color, the orangey red color. I now know that the both teammates are over there. I can either drop this guy chainsaw across and try and get another one in chase. Therefore, three are in chase. I can take him to a neighboring hook. I can drop him, go for a pop goes a weasel kick or whichever Jenny I think's nearly done. Chainsaw back, pick him, hook him, chainsaw to the other one and go for another pop. There are so many really good plays from Thilling Tremor. It stalls the game for an additional 16 seconds. For therefore, for the fact is, you don't really need ruin. I'm a 100% in agreement. you don't need ruin. This perk slot isn't required in the slightest with the build I'm running. So here's what we've got. We've got mass situational awareness when we catch a survivor. Keep in mind we're moving at 230% moving speed throughout the entire board. We come to a generator. There's an urban evading quarter I can't see. I just leave with the chainsaw. I go somewhere else. I'm going to be at another Jenny in less than 2 seconds, 3 seconds. That being said, I can also come chainsaw back and I most likely will see if she's tried to urban evade and touch the generator if I really wanted to catch her. So that's going to help me out a lot as well pop for the stable regression mass situation awareness through thrilling tremor and the ability to snowball through infectious fright now if you don't know what infectious fright does it allows me to down a survivor with both lethal and not lethal so therefore an m1 or a chainsaw when i down a survivor any survivor within my terror radius will scream revealing their location if they have calm spirits they do not leave the bubble above their head nor do they scream this being said if a jake jumped in a locker who doesn't have calm spirits he will still scream but he will not produce the bubble this being said if i there is no way to know if a survivor is screamed if you don't hear them and they're in lockers if they're outside of lockers much like a madness tear up on a doctor a bubble will appear above their head and show you where they were when they scream. So if I chainsawed down Jeff and then two people scream a Megan and a Claudette, I pick Jeff up. Because now I know that one person is MIA who could possibly be working on a generator, which I'm going to know through Thrilling Tremor and know where to go for Pop Goes the Weasel. Alternatively, I just chainsawed down Jeff. One person screams and it's a Claudette nearby. I now walk over and try and chainsaw down Claudette. I just chainsawed down Claudette. Within 10 seconds, I go back and pick up Jeff, and then I hook Jeff and hook Claudette. Alternatively, it took me 40 seconds to catch Claudette because I tunneled and I didn't know when to change targets and I didn't get any pallets because I'm boosted. It happens from time to time. That being said, I now pick Claudette up, hook her away from Jeff, and I chainsaw her across the board. That way there is a distance gap between both of them and people have to come from one save to the other. And if they would saved one of them first, I can chainsaw towards the other one. And if I can't make it in time, it means two people came for the save and therefore no objective is being done. Do you see how you break up the game of Dead by Daylight kind of into a big game of chess? That's kind of what I just did by doing that. Infectious Fright is going to allow me to win games. The fastest game I've ever played as Billy, as of the fact Reese, uh, in, in the last like six months, was about... 36 seconds. I chainsawed one down, I chainsawed another down, I chainsawed another down, and I grabbed one out of a locker. I knew where they all were through Infectious Fright. Don't get me wrong, it happened in the red ranks, but then again, maybe it was just a really bad map for them. At the same time, it just shows you the sheer power of Infectious Fright, the knowledge and information it's going to provide me, and the fact that it works off a chainsaw is phenomenal. So for a player like myself, with no add-ons, with a default 2.5 second chainsaw rev, and 230% movement speed, this is the best build for me. Might not be the best build for you. I'm also going to mention honorable mentions here in terms of different builds. Now, the most common build you would have seen a hillbilly run, uh, which probably has changed recently as of a couple of reworks, will be this. 
Right, this final perk has one of two options, okay? The final perk could be Spirit's Fury. Now, the way this build works is you rely heavily on Ruin. My previous build, I do not rely on Ruin. I have Pop for Regression. I have Thrilling Tremor for uh, Stall as well as Situational Awareness. So I do not run on, uh, re rely on Ruin. This build relies on Ruin, right? Ruin stays up. You find people through Barbecue and Chili. You run around the map. You respect no pallets. You go into a pallet. You get pallet stunned. You break it. If you have Spirits Free built, you rotate to somebody else. You lunge M1 uh, somebody through a pallet. You hit him. He pallet stuns you. You M1 him again. Alternatively, you lunge to hit him through a pallet, he pallet stuns you, you don't M1 him, you walk through a little bit further, and you chainsaw him down. That is the classic Spirit's Fury Enduring Combo. If you're unaware of what they do, this recovers how quickly your pallet stunned, so you can recover and run around the jungle gym faster, and this also breaks a pallet while you are being stunned, but you have to have previously broken two pallets prior to the perk being active. Alternatively, you might be seeing this. This allows you to enduring bamboozled combo. So you'll go through a window, seal it with bamboozled, run around and force the pallet down straight away from a survivor. However, keep in mind bamboozled can be used against you. A good survivor can run around a corner, block your line of sight where you can obviously see a window. You step the window and then cycles off uh, to the swinging cows or in the middle of the map. You know, it can be used against you. Alternatively, do keep in mind the billies are really highly about map movement, map momentum and pressure to take out advantage out of your instant injure which you have unlimited of as well as at 2.5 seconds and huge momentum take advantage of that you do not want to be chasing jungle gyms for a long period of time behind a survivor on top of that bamboozle doesn't work really well on a lot of the maps these days there are a couple of ones that'll work swellingly uh swimmingly on like call tower can work in the tower can work in a couple of the very few and far between good jungle gyms then this map it, it can really suck on it can really suck on the game can really suck on um sheltered woods it's also not too good on Liars Institute. So that even the Temple of Purgata uh, Purgation. See, there's a lot of options where it's bad. You do not want to run a build based off good luck in RNG, unless you're going to be playing a map offering and go, hmm, I'm going to the game. Now I know I'm going to the game. I'm going to run Enduring uh, Spirit's Fury because there's a lot of pallets. I'm not going to need uh, Barbecue and Chili, so I'm going to run Infectious Fright. I'm not going to need Ruins, so I'm going to run Discordance to know where they mass stack. Unless you know where you're going, try and run a build that can be tailored to every map. You might get screwed and you might get a map like Hattonfield, so you want to be able to be stable throughout every map and every situation you put yourself through. Now something else I'm going to point out some honorable mentions on the billy obviously agitation allows you to move at 108 percent movement speed because you are slowed down while carrying a survivor a lot of people will try and do something cute in front of you maybe dead hard after they take a hit to save a guy from a hook you'll be able to walk up behind him and m1 him it gets you to hooking somebody quicker getting you to barbecue and chili getting you to thrilling tremor faster as well as map momentum throughout the board the only better thing about barbecue than tremor is tremor has a cooldown of 60 seconds at tier 3 and 100 seconds while it's tearing up as opposed to barbecue doesn't have a uh, tier cooldown, and barbecue gives you double blood points as opposed to tremor does not. Modern Abuse will widen your field of view, allowing you to get closer. The Hillbilly moves at 115% movement speed while not revving his chainsaw. That also being said, he can also uh, has a 32 meter heartbeat. Now, because of this, you're going to reduce his heartbeat down even smaller, allowing you to get closer, initiating chase, and understanding how to path behind survivors better. Yet again, I do not recommend it. You can go Iron Maiden. Something I want to point out to people in the audience here is Tinker is not bad, but you're still going to be able to hear the chainsaw across the board. Uh, be very mindful when it comes to Surge, okay? Unlike Infectious Fright, Surge does not work when you chainsaw down somebody. Infectious Fright does work when you chainsaw down somebody. So be very careful. You have to M1 somebody for that to take effect. Therefore, if you're running Surge and Infectious Fright, it can really bite you in the ass, all right? For having to decide which perk you want to activate or you need to double M1, you're not going to get the value out of your chainsaw as much. So kind of steer away from Thrilling Tremor. Uh, not thr uh, Surge. Unlike Michael Myers, who can benefit from an M1 down with built-in horn of ground. You can't really do that unless you were running the perk horn and ground. Alright guys, I think that's going to be all to mention about the Billy. I mean, if you really want to go real try hard and uh, kind of like excel and push yourself above everyone else, there's a couple of things I'm going to point out. Discordance is going to give you mass situational awareness to know where two targets are. So that build I was showing you before that I currently run, if I were, f if I was feeling extra ambitious about my playstyle, I'd be looking at something a little like this. Keep in mind, this is based off running no add-ons as opposed to being able to run anything I want. The build would change if I was using add-ons. You can 
can be running Drift King Billy. You can be running a lot of different things. I mean, things like make your choice work really well on the Billy too. However, I feel it's a waste due to the fact you have an instant down on hand at all times. But then again, some of the really hard jungle gyms, you can moonwalk Hydro Light M1 as opposed to Chainsaw. Now, this here is an absolute devastating build, okay? This is going to allow me to know where multiple people spawn because they're going to jump on a Jenny. I can Chainsaw across. If I Chainsaw one of them down through Infectious Fright, I will know how long it's going to take a survivor to get out of 32 yards. If he did not scream within the time I Chainsaw down the other guy because I caught the other guy in 6, 7 seconds, anything over 15 seconds, I'll assume he's out of 32 meters. If I down him within 6 seconds, 10 seconds, I'll check a locker and I'll probably pull the other guy out only because I know you're not going to get out of 32 meters in that period of time unless you'll be lining in a straight line out. Generally, there's going to be obstacles in the way too. So that can be a devastating combo. This is personally what I would run if I didn't see multiple toolboxes, but right now we're seeing three or four toolboxes in most games. Therefore, I'm putting Ruin on. But I feel this being the best build if you're not versing multiple toolboxes as opposed to including Ruin over Discordance if you are versing multiple toolboxes. Like I said before, Corrupt Intervention is an honorable mention as well. I think I've overstepped, well, I've, I've said everything that I can think of. Uh, keep in mind, on effects, uh, on hit effects do not apply with the chainsaw anymore, much like the pig's d uh, dash or ambush. Therefore, sloppy butcher, hex third seal, these kind of things will not apply when you chainsaw down somebody, which is very, very unfortunate to take a nerf to already perks that aren't in the god tier region. The final perk I'm going to point out to you guys is going to be Rancor. A lot, of you, a lot of people undermine how powerful this perk is. Okay, a lot of people read it and go, oh, that's shit. You can mori your obsession on exit gates powered. Your job's not to get the exit pow uh, gates powered. Why would you recommend this perk? Well, for the first bit, whenever a generator is completed, all survivors will scream revealing their location. Even if it's Jeff or a Jake with Iron, uh, iron Will and Calm Spirits, uh, they will, you'll still know where they are. That there is just devastating. It's such a phenomenal perk. The ability to be able to know where multiple targets are. You've just hooked Megan, you're about to pick up Jeff, and then David completes a Jenny and you see Feng Min right in front of you crouching behind some tires and you can just down Feng Min and go straight over and win the game. It is a devastating perk. A lot of people think it's really bad. Honestly, 50% of the perk doesn't matter. You shouldn't be relying on the exit gates being powered to Mori somebody. No, you should be looking at the first half. Your objective is to stop Jennies from being done. This is a rich man's bitter murmur. Keep that in mind. I think it's better than Tinkerer. It's better than bitter murmur. Unfortunately, generators have to be completed for it to activate. And yes, the obsession does get to see you. And you don't get to see them. You get to see the bubble of where they are. But all in all... Fantastic perk. I can highly recommend it to a lot of people, whether you be experienced or inexperienced. It's going to give you mass situational awareness, rotation, and understanding where you need to go, when you need to go. You might see two people clustered together and one apart on a corner generator. Uh, these two are coming in for a hook save, and there's one Jenny left because they just finished one. You go straight over there to your left-hand side. You chase them off it. You kick it with pop. You chase him down. Other guy gets saved. You can down him. You hook him. You rotate. Like, a lot of different things need to be coming to where It just allows you to go, okay, what is happening right now, and give you information rather than having to think too much about it. It just gives you the visual indicators. So all in all, guys, I'm going to quickly point out some very honorable mentions on the Billy. If you run this out on here and this out on here, this gives you 290% movement speed with your chainsaw. It's called Double Death and Doom Engraving. Do you keep in mind when a Billy releases his chainsaw after 2.5 seconds, he can do a crazy curve or flick based off his sensitivity. So be mindful of that. He cannot twist or curve like that after he's released the chainsaw, but he has that one second window where he can. You've also got things like this. This is also known as the fastest chainsaw in the game. It comes in at about 1.7, 1.8 seconds as opposed to 2.5. It is also referred to as an instant saw. It is very fast. It is very devastating. And a lot of people say it's very unfair. It is quite devastating to come across in verse. However, this is known as the best Billy combo. This is going to be tuning guide and the uh, Thompson mix, all right? This is going to allow you to chainsaw. If you do miss the chainsaw, for whatever reason, you can recover straight away and chainsaw again as are the benefits from the Thompson mix. Considerably decrease the cooldown of the chainsaw. If you hit the chainsaw, you can keep going. So it stacks really well with Infectious Fright and the rotation. Very devastating. And finally, looking at some other ones I'm going to be pointing out, you have things called Moonshine and Spiked Shoes. This is going to allow you to curve dramatically and twist around corners while mid-chainsaw. It's going to be devastatingly fast. A lot of people pair it with Doom or Death engravings. You don't need to stack these two. They will not work really well together. And Spiked Shoes is a poorer man's version of Thompson Mix. So a lot of people will be running things like this. Alternatively, things 
like this. That way they can curve around the map with Mono and Abuse with a smaller Harpy and Chainsaw you while you're on a generator because they're going to be moving at 3 meters per second and they're going to be able to creep up on you very fast as the Harpy does not change quick enough for them to be able to, for you to, be able to react on half the generators. If I was going to run things like this, what map would I want to go to? I would 100% want to go to, um, not Father's Chapel, but the Asylum. If I got the Asylum, it would be absolutely lethal for this kind of build absolutely lethal uh but if obviously if i was running this i'd change my perks as well to better suit the add-ons i'm using all in all guys that's going to be all for the billy i do uh, do want to apologize for the long video there is a lot to cover based on the fact that he is one of the best three killers in the game and this is why i put him in third best killer spot with no add-ons with add-ons he is still up there he is devastating and it's going to take a lot to knock him uh, out of the game become being the king of uh dead by daylight for the Billy. Alrighty guys, if you want to know anything more about Dead by Daylight, don't hesitate to come over and check out the live streams where I'll be more than happy to teach you guys as much as I can. That's all for now, and uh, take care.